Hey everybody, this is Nori and Lori. I got thinking, you know, the New Year's is right around the corner and we got New Year's resolutions coming and people are going to be hitting the ground running trying to come up with ways to either lose weight or to reverse health conditions. That seems to be the time of the year when everybody gets really motivated. So I thought, why not share some of my experience with you over the last three years plus years and share some things with you that I've learned along the way that kind of helps you prepare for any diet that you may choose to do. So uh, grab your coffee, tea, or water, and let's dive into this. Before we dive into this, I wanted to just take a minute and let you know, if you don't know my journey, I have been three plus years doing keto. I have lost 70 pounds to my first go around and this last time losing about 93 to this point. Um, I've had the ups and downs, I've had the roller coasters, and I've used keto to help me get to where I'm at. But it really doesn't matter which diet that you use. Um, these tips are universal for helping you make that decision and staying on track. So let's go ahead and dive into this first one. And the first one is why? Why are you wanting to do this? You really need to sit down and think about, all right, you want to lose weight, but why? Or you're saying, all right, I have diabetes and this is the year I'm going to get it under control. But why? List those whys. These whys keep you motivated along your journey. Because when things don't happen the way you think that they should, you can lose motivation quickly. So listing the whys of why you're doing this really helps you stay on the right path of your journey and helps you reach out um, to stay motivated. So the second thing to consider would be your mindset and I think it's almost just as important as the why because they kind of tie into each other you got to have the reasons for doing it and then you got to prepare your mind so some things that you really need to consider is um, do you get overwhelmed quickly or are you do you know that you're one of those that you start things but you don't tend to finish things this is one of the times that you would want to sit down after you've created your why list and start coming up with a list of how you're going to stay on track when you become overwhelmed and you just want to quit. Um, so hopefully some of my other considerations will help you kind of come up with that game plan. Um, another thing that you really need to keep in mind is, are you going to be one of those that's going to need support? Um, it is okay to need support. We all sometimes can't do that journey by ourselves. So that's just something else to keep in mind too. Since we're already talking about support, support is my third consideration or tip. Um, and a lot of people like to be very independent and say, I got this, I can do this all by myself. And I think that's great. And it may work for you, but some people do need support. So if you live alone, I have some ideas for you on how to find support or seek support. And if you are not alone and your family is not supportive of what you're doing and they're not on board with you these tips will help you too so if you have a best friend that is supportive of everything you're doing or you know somebody else who is dieting at the same time you could use them as a diet buddy so that way that they're there for you when you need them and you can be there for them when they need you and uh, another way would be uh, using social media. Get out on Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook, or whatever social media that you're on, and put out there, hey, I am fixing to make a big lifestyle change, and I'm taking on this journey, and I am just looking to see who would be willing to help me through this journey. And you may be really surprised. You might find a family member or friend who is starting this journey along with you, and then you all can become diet buddies. If you're not comfortable putting it out like that to your friends and family on your own page, there is tons of groups out there 
or whatever you're wanting to get into. And a lot of them are very supportive. And if you find one that's not supportive, you absolutely leave the group and find another one. Because like I said, there's tons of them and there's lots of people out there ready to support you on your journey. And we'll be just excited about your journey as you are and we'll be that motivation when you need it. And who knows, you might even find a close personal new friend that will be willing to be your diet buddy. All right, so the fourth thing to consider is whatever journey you choose to take, it's going to be a lifestyle. That means you're making changes that are going to have to be semi-permanent or if not permanent. Um, and this is also coming back to having the right mindset too. When we all think about diet, the very first thing we think about is we know technically what we should be eating. We should be eating good proteins, fats, and vegetables. <clears throat> and so when we do these diets, that's the first thing that we do. And, um, and depending on what, what diet you do, you'll be eating within certain food groups and stuff like that. So we already know that that's what we should be doing, but ideally we wouldn't be to this point if we were eating this way anyways. And this is why it really needs to be considered a lifestyle because you can't go on a diet and lose the weight, the weight and then go back doing what you was doing because you're going to gain that weight back and probably then some. And one of the reasons why this happens is every time you do a diet, you change your metabolism a little bit. So that means you got to eat more strict so every time you go in into a strict way of eating, the next time you do this, you got to go stricter to get the same results you had before because your metabolism is used to that. You got to amp it up a little bit. So that's one of the things you got to think about in your mindset too is, are you committed to making this a lifestyle? Because when you get to the maintenance phase of whatever you choose to do, you've lost the weight or you're comfortable where you're at. And you want to maintain where you're at with not gaining. You've got to figure out what you're going to do to maintain it. So if you're coming to this diet with the, with the thoughts of saying, hey, I'm just going to do this diet and I'm going to lose the weight and I'm going to go back eating the same junk that I was before. It's not going to work. It wasn't working for you to begin with. That's why you're doing the diet. And so this is one of the things that you really got to consider that whatever change that you make is got to become almost permanent. Now, I'm not saying you have to be strict all the time. If you choose to do something strict, I'm absolutely saying, yes, you should indulge in times when you're in maintenance. You live life. Have a happy life. Don't let diet control you to the point that you don't feel like you're living. But... You do have to have that change in lifestyle when it comes to your association with food to order to maintain the results that you've gotten this far. So that's one thing you really need to consider. All right, so my fifth consideration is health conditions. Yeah, you're probably thinking, nah, I already know what my health conditions are. What are you talking about? Now, I'm not talking about your pre-diagnosed health conditions. I'm talking about undiagnosed conditions that, that your new diet or lifestyle could bring to the surface. And I can think of three things right off the top of my head. That being, uh, if you've not ever had GERD-like symptoms and they occur, uh, gallbladder or gallstone issues or kidney stones or kidney issues. And a lot of diets actually get blamed for these things when it's not the actual diet that's done it. It is the diet that you've had leading up, but these new changes kind of brought these things up to the surface. So let's just talk about GERD for a minute. I don't want to go into a lot of great detail. This is what my num my bonus tip is for. Um, hopefully you will learn more about these type of things. So a lot of times when you do not have GERD-like symptoms or heartburn and then you come into something, a new diet or lifestyle, and you have these symptoms, it just boils down to having low stomach acid. So maybe your diet has, doesn't need the stomach acid um, that your new lifestyle is needing. Or the older that you get, your stomach acid pH actually goes down. 
So you may have to do some things to help that. Now, as far as gall gallbladder issues go, um, carby diets tend to create higher cholesterol and gallstones. But you can live with a gallbladder full of gallstones for a long time. And let's say the diet you're eating isn't very um, fatty, so your gallbladder is not having to work as it was designed to do. And your new lifestyle may have more fat, like if you did keto, and all of a sudden your gallbladder is having to push that, uh, that bile out into your stomach to break down that fat, and it pushes a stone into your bile duct. Um, and then all of a sudden you start having this pain. That's the scenario. And kidney stones or kidney problems, a lot of times if people are intolerant to oxalates, um, they will have kidney issues before they start a lot of these diets. But sometimes it can slip through until you start a new diet. And when we do start new diets and new ways of eating, we pretty much know how we need to really need to eat. So we will start eating things that may be higher in, an ox in oxalates like um, berries or uh spinach or cow or something like that and then you have this oxalate overload on your kidneys and you start having problems with your kidneys or having kidney stones and that arrived after it. I want to really stress that no the new diet did not cause these symptoms they just essentially made them noticeable because a lot of people will say this diet caused this problem and that's why I stopped, and that's probably not what really happened. So let's talk about number six. I've got my tea in my hand. I can't do it. So my sixth consideration is hormones. Maybe you're coming into this new journey and lifestyle knowing that you already have hormone issues. By the way, that's your endocrine system. So maybe you already know you're pre-diabetic, diabetic, diabetic uh, have thyroid issues or adrenal issues. But what if you don't? What if you're undiagnosed coming into this? So normally, if you are diagnosed, you're going to know that thyroid has everything to do with the metabolism and more likely are going to be a slow loser. Um, if you have diabetes, you're probably going to realize that you're going to have to work on your diet to balance out those blood sugars. Um, if you're coming in with adrenal issues, you know, you're going to have to do some special things to bring your cortisol down because cortisol absolutely will not let you lose weight. It actually stops the fat burning process. But what if you're coming in and you've not been diagnosed? Um, so obviously one of the things you're going to see is not a lot of weight loss. And because you're not seeing a lot of weight loss, you may get unmotivated and quit. But what I would suggest is go to the doctor, say, I'm doing these things and I'm not seeing changes. Do you think that I may have a hormone imbalance somewhere? And just start to investigate that because it absolutely can impact your weight loss. And if you know you have these, then you know that there's certain tweaks or you can research certain tweaks that you can do to get on that. Or you can expect that it's just your journey is going to take longer. So just keep those in. So my seventh consideration is marketing. Let me take a drink. You probably ain't going to like what I've got to say. Big food wants to cash in on whatever you're doing. They don't want to lose revenue because you decided to start a new diet journey slash lifestyle. They want you to still come down those middle aisles and browse and buy their products because their marketing game is great. And they've marketed things fat-free, sugar-free, low-sugar, keto, Weight Watchers, and the list goes on, right? So you see these products marked and you're like, Oh yeah, this is keto friendly. You turn over the nutritional label. You're probably looking at net carbs if you're keto and you're like, Ooh, this is only two net gram carbs. I can have that. And maybe you can, and you can get to get away with it. But let's talk about what they're doing to these food products. If it's fat free, they've replaced the fat with something else. And it is generally sugar. So just because it's fat free doesn't mean it's low sugar. 
And if it's labeled sugar-free, that means they have taken out the sugar and they put in a sugar alcohol, which is generally myotol or sorbitol. And uh, those can actually spike your sugar higher than what sugar does on the insulin index. And then if you're choosing to do keto, you know, like I said, they're looking at net carbs. <sighs> Let's take a drink. So they replace a lot of foods with a lot of fiber to get you the net carbs that um, will be acceptable for you to buy it. And they're going to put things like oat fiber in it, insoluble corn fiber, and the list goes on. Now, that doesn't mean that that's conducive for you. It may actually cause inflammation in your body, and then you're going to gain water weight. So if you're a busy person and your life is on the go, um, and you do need quick things, you know, some of these things you probably could do, but I do suggest that you just go and get you an inexpensive um, insulin meter and check your blood sugars and see how it's spiking your blood sugars. Make sure you've fasted for two hours before you do your little test. Test at 30 minutes, 60 minutes, and two hours after eating it and don't eat anything else with it. And see if your blood sugars go over 30 points. Um... And if it does, does it return back to normal? Because if it doesn't return back to normal in that two hours, then that's probably not going to be a conducive food to have on your journey. Um, and if you're into the keto things, just because your blood sugar turns out well doesn't mean it didn't affect your ketones. So those are just some tools to have in your toolbox to see if these type of foods will work for you. Because just because they're marketed doesn't mean that they're good for you. So we are on our eighth thing to consider, but I got a bonus for you today, so stay tuned for that. I um, I feel that a lot of people know what number eight is, but sometimes we need to remind ourselves, or maybe you don't know. So whenever you start your journey, you could lose up to 30 pounds really quick, like really quick, and it's generally because it's water weight, because we shouldn't go and eat things that we know that we should be eating. And that releases a lot of inflammation in our body. And inflammation is, unfortunately, fluid. So you're going to probably release a lot of water weight. And at this point, this is where a lot of people tend to stop. Or don't lose anymore. Or where people lose motivation and they're like, it's not working for me. Stay the course and do my bonus tip, which we're going into. So that bonus tip is research, research, research. Um, you're going into a new lifestyle. Don't just run into it head first and tackle it. Um, that's not how you win the game. You learn plays. You research other people, other teams to get that best play. So that tackle works and that person doesn't get the ball down to the end, the other end of the field. So why wouldn't you research anything else that you're going to have a huge impact in your life? Now, here's the other side of that. I think you should research, but I don't think you should over research. Like you shouldn't know everything as you go into it. Like every little factor, leave some things to be learned on the way because when you over-research, you tend to start to overcomplicate really simple things. And when you overcomplicate things, you might not even start your journey. And this is where I come into my motto. My motto, if you've watched any of my videos, is your journey begins with you. But don't overcomplicate it because you won't start. And that's the motto that I stayed with because it is so easy to overcomplicate really simple things. And that's why I'm saying you need the support system. You need to know what your health is like going into. You need to have real expectations so that you do not become defeated. And I'm gonna come I hope that these things, the considerations or tips, what you wanna call them, help you along on whatever diet that you choose to do. I actually wasn't one of those that dieted a lot in my life. I'd done like South Beach. 
and I lost some weight. Um, and I've been big most of my adult life. Um, but I was busy with children and things like that. And I didn't really focus on a lot of dieting, but I did do South or I did the South beach diet and I had a great success with that. And then when I got really real with my weight loss, I did the whole 30, which is an elimination diet. And then I kind of just eased into keto. It doesn't matter what diet that you do. You just got to keep your expectations real and know that on any journey, it isn't going to be picture perfect. You're going to have struggles. You're going to have roadblocks. And sometimes you may have to turn around and find a different route. I just want to make sure that you all keep your expectations real so that you can be successful on your new journey. Bye, everybody.